Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I have a recipe on here for chicken cordon bleu. Um, but since I had all of the ingredients for that except my chicken was already cooked and I had some leftovers that was shredded, I decided to make that into a casserole. So I thought I'd just go ahead and um, video it while I was making it. So we're starting out with two tablespoons of butter and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm working on the sauce right now. So we'll let that melt down. To this we're going to be adding some water and half and half as well as one envelope of onion soup mix. So let's let this melt down. Now that we have all of the ingredients in the pan, we want to bring this to a boil. Then we'll reduce the heat and let it simmer until it starts to thicken just a little. Not, It won't thicken much at all because we're going to pour this over um, the chicken before it goes into the oven. So while the sauce is cooking, I did just want to pan over here to where I'm working on the chicken. I just I just put all the chicken into a casserole dish and then I'm layering in some ham. And I want to put a layer of cheese on top of the ham. I'm using Swiss. You could use whatever you like. Provolone's good. Uh, whatever you have on hand will be fine. Now if you did have some cooked ham, you could always shred it just like you did the chicken. Put it in. All I had was the lunch meat, so I'm using that. Mm, it smells good. Now while I've been working on this, the oven has been preheating to 350. We're almost to the boil. Normally what I like to do is roast some broccoli and cauliflower or whatever vegetable you might like. Um, but with this being a cheese sauce, I just think it goes pairs really well with the, um, the broccoli and the cauliflower. Um, I don't have any of that, so it's probably just going to be paired with uh, maybe some mashed potatoes and um, one other vegetable or maybe even just a salad. But um, we're going to pour most of the sauce into the casserole dish with the chicken once, once it's done. 
and then I will reserve a little bit back and when you serve it you would just drizzle a little more sauce over it and the potatoes um, in this case or if you had the broccoli you know you could drizzle a little bit over the broccoli Okay, you can see it's starting to bubble, um, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce the heat down to low. I just want that to simmer a little while. I just want to soften up those little onion bits in there a little. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to, so it'll continue to cook when it's in the oven. But because I do reserve some sauce back um, to serve with the vegetables, I do like to go ahead and make sure that the sauce is completely cooked beforehand. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just pour it in. And I'm going to pour as close to the edge as I can. Make sure it's dripping over so it's going underneath to the chicken too. a little more since I don't actually have broccoli to okay and so you can see I'm just holding back a little there to use as a almost like a gravy okay so this is not really gonna have to cook long guys because all of this is pre-cooked unlike with the chicken cordon bleu where um, the chicken is going in raw this is already cooked chicken. I just wanted to make sure I was able to use it, the leftovers. So it's not going to have to cook long at all. Now I am going to sprinkle some panko breadcrumbs. This is normally what it would be rolled in when it went in the oven. So just for taste, I'm going to make sure we have that on there as well. I did not want those on before I poured in the sauce or they would have just absorbed the majority of the sauce. So I didn't want that to happen. Okay, so we're going into an oven and I will bring you back later. One other tip that I do when I make mashed potatoes is I cook my potatoes in a little steaming basket um, you'll find that you have more potato flavor than when you're just boiling them. A lot of that boils out, it seems, and you have to add butter and um, other seasonings to get your flavor put back into a potato. Uh, I did have someone tell me once to use baked potatoes, which is the best probably. Um, as far as flavor goes, it's definitely the best. But, you know, it was a little bit of a nuisance to peel those potatoes because I don't personally like the peeling in my mashed potatoes. Um, but if you do, that's great too. Um, then I tried baking them without the peel and you just had a really dry potato. So um, I found that I could reserve a lot of the flavor by using this little basket. And I just wanted to throw that tip in in case you've never tried it. Bear in mind, it's not going to boil a lot of the starch out, so you're going to use more um, milk to make sure it gets creamy um, versus if you boiled all of that out. You know, it doesn't take much at that point to make a mashed potato. Um, but I think you'll find the flavors really good doing it this way if you've never tried it.